video where I will show you how you can do your own embroidered name sweaters like this one. These make great gifts for kids and also adults alike and there's endless possibilities of the color options you can do with the sweater and the yarn itself. I have everything listed that you'll need in the description box below as well as links to my favorites on my Amazon account. The two main items you're going to need is definitely a knit sweater and also yarn. The size yarn I'm using is a size 4. I think it gives nice, clean, eligible writing. If you go any thicker, you might have to play around a little bit with the spacing of the letters and the font itself for it to be legible. My other recommendation here is to definitely get the Peel & Stick Water Soluble Stabilizer Sheet. It changes the game. Believe me, it's going to help with your stitch facing. It's going to give stabilization. It's going to make the process way smoother and you'll just be happier that you used it. With the stabilizer sheet, um, in my video, I do just write the names in pencil and then trace onto the stabilizer sheet. However, you do have the option of actually running that through your printer and having the printer print the name. So if you try that, please let me know how it goes in the comments below. I'd love to hear. Otherwise, let's just jump into it. This is everything you'll need to do the embroidery name sweater. So first is a sticky um, stabilizer sheet. This one you can actually run through the printer. Um, and then I have my other favorite one linked in my Amazon storefront. So you'll need this. You'll need some lined paper. Or if you're going to use the computer to print, you can just do that. Um, pencil, a water-soluble marker, an awl some darning needles and scissors and then of course the sweater that you're going to embroider the name on and yarn i like to use a size 4 yarn um, i like this one by burnett it's very soft and it has a good feel to it um, i've had some people comment saying that like higher sizes yarns it's a little bit too hard to work i think the size 4 it gives you a nice um amount of yarn but also the name is easier to read so I'll just keep that in mind okay and then we'll just get started so first I like to um, just write out the name that I'm going to do so on my notebook piece of paper and I have my sweater the width of the notebook is pretty much the same size of the chest area so that's what I'm going to base it upon and then I just write it out um, sometimes it takes me a couple times to get it right so let's see if I like that mm -hmm. I'm gonna try it again okay so basically I'm just writing it out um, and then why I like to use lined paper is you want to make, at least I like to make all my letters touch the same line, and then like that, and then the name's Colton that we're doing. So it looks like that. I'm actually pretty happy with that one, so that's what I'm going to go with. So then what you do is you can just grab a sheet of the stabilizer. And it's the sticky kind, so this is the side that you're going to write on, and then the other side has the peel and stick paper. And basically all I do is I'm going to line it up here, and then I'm going to grab my water-soluble marker, and I'm just going to trace. that looks good. I am now going to cut that out. Um, unfortunately, I only have these by me right now, so uh, that's what I'm going to use. But honestly, those actually work pretty good. So I have my name, and now I'm going to use this tool. It's called an owl. Um, and basically what I'm going to do with it is just pre-poke holes into the stabilizer sheet. That way when I go to embroider, 
Um, first, my spacing will already be determined, and then second, because this is sticky, um, I don't want my darning needle to keep getting stuck because I'll get residue on it. So that's why we're going to pre-poke and just start, and then I kind of just um, do maybe like a quarter inch spacing. And then I kind of go in the direction that I'm going to embroider to. So I'll show you what that means when we get to the O. So now that we're at the O, I'm going to actually poke a hole here. And what I mean by poking the hole as if you were to embroider is just to give you a sense of like, okay, I'm going to do, I'm gonna start the C here, I'm gonna work my way around, and then up to here I'm gonna stop, and then I'll probably break and start the O here, and then work my way back down and around. So just keep poking until you have everything perforated and ready to go. poked and ready. Now you want to grab your sweater and lay it flat. And what I like to do is get this centered with the neck. So all you have to do is find the two ends of your word and I fold it in half. So here, I mean they're pretty close to the edge so I'm going to grab the edge um, and line them up. Okay, so now we know where our center is, it's right there. And then peel the back off. And now we're going to find center, so I can see my crease there, and then just place it as best as you can. And flatten it out. And that is ready to be embroidered, you have your template. Now what else I'll do is I'll grab my yarn and you want to grab a pretty long piece and the reason I say long is you, in my opinion, I think you should do the word in one piece of yarn so that you don't have many knots on the back and that way um, things don't come unraveled as easily. And doing it this way, um, it does take a lot longer in the beginning to work it because you have to pull all this through. But as you get to the end, it works faster. And then the benefit is you do have less knots and strings on the back. So I'm gonna use this green darning needle. I also have these linked these are pretty cool. They're not exactly straight. They have a little slight curve to them. And we're just going to thread it on. And then we're going to knot the other end a couple times. Let's do three. And I'm just going to balance out the yarn so it's a little bit equal. So the tail end that's not knotted is a slightly shorter than the end that is knotted but again I have a very long piece of yarn so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here on the C so I'm gonna put my hand inside here and maybe turn this around slightly and basically just find that hole with my needle and pull it through okay and like I said it's a lot of yarn to pull through so we'll be doing the chain stitch, which basically means you're going to come out of a hole, go back into the same hole, and then on the other side, go through the next hole and then hook the loop before you move on. So here we just came out of this hole, we're gonna go right back in. Pull the yarn through and then hold the, the other end of the yarn. So the whole thing doesn't fall through the hole, just the majority. We just need to um, keep a loop out. 
So here we have our loop. We don't want to let that go. Put my hand back in here and then I'm going into the next hole and I'm going to grab this loop. And I'm going to pull that out. Okay, and then we have one chain done. And now we're going to go right back into that same hole. And put all this yarn through. And you can see I'm using my thumb just to make sure I'm catching the yarn and not all of it is falling through. And we're going to go into the next hole and pull it through. Now this time it's going to catch that loop and create our second chain stitch. Okay. And then I'm just kind of adjusting it because I don't want it to be too tight here because I do want it to have like a nice bubble chain so you can see and now I'm just going to go right back into that hole and continue the chain stitch and that's basically it you're just going to do that until you get to the end so I'm going to continue on here and then maybe we'll meet back at the O and I can talk you through how I work that done and now we're going to move on to the O. So what I'm going to do here is instead of going back into the same hole on the inside of the loop, I'm going to go into the same hole but on the outside of the loop and that's one way or that's how you can end your chain stitch. So I'm going and going, so I'm going and taking my needle and putting it on the outside of the loop but into the same hole. And then we're going to pull that through. Okay, so now that is being pulled through and then that's how you can end the chain stitch but basically here I just wanted to finish off the C because now from here I'm going to jump up to here and then work on the O. So I'm going to take my needle and put it through that first hole and pull all this yarn through. And then back into the same hole. And then I'm going to use my thumb again to kind of um, catch the yarn from falling all the way through the hole. Like that. And then we're going to go to the next hole here and catch that loop. and pull that yarn through. Okay, and then once again, right back into the same hole, using my thumb to catch the yarn, um, and pulling the yarn through. Okay, now here, as you can see, there's no other hole until after the C. So we're actually going to go back into the hole that we used to finish the C to grab this loop. And it's going to have like the overlapping effect a little bit here. There you go, just like that. And then once again, we're going right back into that same hole. Now we go into the next empty hole, take our needle through and catch the loop. And it's pretty simple, you basically just continue doing that. 
Um, anytime you want to end the chain stitch, just remember to put the needle on the outside of the loop and that's how you can finish it off. Every once in a while you might want to take a peek on, on the inside and see if there's anything going on here for this for a minute I had a little bit loose I didn't do the last um, loop as tight as I should have so I just went back in to tighten that up if you do have some loose stitches on the back side um, and you've kind of made it past the point where you can fix it right there on the spot you can always fix it at the end um, when we weave in the tails I'll kind of talk you through on how you can do that. That way you don't have anything that can get snagged from the inside. Okay, and then basically here, the only in interesting thing is that we're going to cross over this little stitch right that we already have. Um, and I think maybe I might cheat this hole a little bit and bring it closer. So at that point, I'll just poke it with my needle. Um, but you can also do the awe again if you need to, just to add an additional poke there. But I think I'll just use my needle this one time. Should it be too bad? So here I'm just going to poke a hole, sometimes you can use your thumb to get a good firm spot and then there we go. And now we have completed the O and we're just going to keep going. Okay here I'm just putting an end to the T, so again I just went on the outside of the loop to end that chain stitch. And now, um, with my yarn still attached, I still have a pretty long piece of yarn, I'm just going to hop over to cross the T. So it's all still attached on the inside. On At the end, I will show you how I clean it up. So here, just starting a new chain stitch. And we're gonna cross the T. Okay, and then just to close off this chain stitch, we're just going to go on the outside of the loop into that same hole and pull it through. Okay, and then I just want to show you what the inside looks like at the moment. Um, so you can kind of see where I stopped the T and then hopped over to cross it. And then we'll clean this little loop up at the end. So now um, that those letters are done, I'm just going to start back up with the O here and make my way around. And then I will meet you at the end. Okay, now that I'm at the end here, I'm just going to go ahead and close off this chain stitch. Like so. And now the full name is done and it's looking good. So the last thing to do is to weave in the end. So I'm going to turn this inside out. And because I only use one piece of yarn, we don't have too much to do here. So what I'm actually going to do is I still have quite a bit left. I'm going to make it a little shorter so it's easier to work with. About there and now we're on the back side and I'm going to just start at the back here and weave this in just by picking up these back stitches and then this is where I said if you had some loose uh, back stitches like I kind of have a loose one right here this is a good chance to tighten it up so as you're picking these up just very loosely you're going to run this through and by picking up these stitches, it's going to give them a little bit more uh, security or secure them better to the sweater. So here I had, I did have a little bit of a looser stitch, so I'm just going to go around it a little bit. 
and then keep picking these stitches up. And you don't have to go all the way, you can stop anywhere and just tie a knot um, and cut the tail off. But I'm gonna go, I think, to the T where I had some larger, looser uh, pieces of yarn. So even here I have a bit of a looser yarn or a looser stitch where I was carrying from the O, from the top of the N to the bottom so I'm just going to go ahead and pick that up and like secure that like that and then here just be careful to not push the needle through to the front side okay so now that's secure and we can go back down here too okay. see I'm kind of just picking up you don't want to go too tight because you don't want to pull on the stitches on the front so you can do this loosely but still enough so it gets secured that's basically it I mean you just get you just go with what you think works so now I feel like it's not the cutest thing back here, but it, all of it is secure, which I'm happy with. So now the rest of this tail, I'm just going to start doing a couple knots. So I'll do a knot here. And I'll do one more. And then you can go ahead and weave in the tail. Really anywhere, again, it's pretty random. And tie a knot. And I did a couple knots, I think. Do one more. Just so I know it won't come undone. And then in part with these knots that we did in all the weaving, if something does come undone, it's not going to completely come undone. It'll just get loose. And then it's not a big deal to fix that. Okay. And then all we have left is this tail that we started with. So I'm just going to thread that as best as I can and weave it through here i'll try to and then another good point here is to give yourself a long tail in the beginning mine's kind of short so it's a little harder to work but i'm going to do my best and just use this to pick up that thread and keep weaving it through okay and i think that's pretty good this end is knotted, so if this were to come unraveled, it'd be fine. And then I'm just gonna snip this little piece like that. And we're all done. So this is the inside, what it looks like. Pretty clean, nothing's gonna get picked up or snagged here. And then turn it inside out. And it looks like this. And it looks good. So at this point, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse this under some warm water. And then I'm going to lay this flat to dry. And then I'll be done.